Hey there folks, my name is Alex, and behind me is Betty the Badass Chevy Express van. My partner Meg and I live in this van and have been living in this van for the past five months. Betty is just your regular old Chevy Express 2500 delivery van. I know this van looks like it's four wheel drive, but it's only got a rear axle and no front axles. We're trying to educate people on just how far you can go in a two wheel drive van. We strongly believe that we can make it to 95% of the places that we want to go and we can make it to 100% of the places that we need to go. So we built this van to get out to the distant places where there's not as many people and the environments and landscapes are epic and beautiful and we wanted a vehicle that could get us there and get us back and we could be comfortable wherever we park. From when Megan bought this vehicle, we have completely cut off the roof, put on a 17 inch TV top from high top vans. We have repainted the van with Raptor liner, built the front and rear bumpers. The front bumper has a really great approach angle as well it has a winch. The rear bumper is, has a really good departure angle. I had to teach myself how to weld uh, aluminum with TIG and I built the roof rack which houses uh, 330 watts of solar. Welcome to the entryway of the van guys. So the way I designed this is I wanted a whole bunch of things really easily accessible from outside of the van. So you'll see right here that we have, you know, kind of like dishcloth. We've got a little ax under there. I can access water from outside if I wanted to just fill up my water bottle standing outside. Right here, um, this is part of the bathroom, believe it or not, we have this really convenient pee funnel. And that's just so that we don't have to leave the van to go to the bathroom at night. As well, right down here, we have kind of just a drawer for all of the um, like bathroom items, toilet paper, uh, wipes and all that kind of stuff. We have some cleaning supplies just for the kitchen here and also just for cleaning the pee funnel and stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to make things really easy. All right, so you may have seen this right here. So in our van, we have, you know, kind of the typical swivel seat. We can turn it around. And what I've done is I've taken a lagging style table and I've welded a bracket to the B pillar so that I can have a desk space right here. So I actually do all of my photo and video editing right here. I just move my desk out of the way, get in there, and then put my computer in. And I have like an editing zone here, which is really convenient. I can't fully stand up in the van, so um, it's far more comfortable for me to just sit here. I'm out of the way, and Meg can do all of her stuff in here standing. And uh, yeah, it just kind of maximizes the space as well right here um, we've got a refrigerator between the seats makes it really good for Meg to while we're driving to reach in here and get food and snacks and stuff like that drinks if we need it um, it's a really great use of space just because uh, if we had it anywhere else in the van it would just be cumbersome and annoying to get around so this space above my head I'll just open the door here this is a pantry space this is one of many, and Meg has absolutely filled our pantry spaces with food. Uh, she loves food, I love food, we're humans, we like to eat. With this, including all the other stuff, of course, we can get 10 days uh, of off-grid time. So right here, this is what we call our coffee corner. We just got all of our coffee stuff in here. We definitely value good coffee. Got a full-size closet in here for all of our jackets and stuff like that. Down here is where we store our Boxio toilet. I'm Nate Murphy, author of the Van Conversion Guide, and I just want to let you know that I'm running a free online training which will teach you how to make van life free or profitable. I will show you how to choose a van and build it out and avoid the one 
big mistake that most people make. I will show you how I made van life completely free and a bunch of other stuff that people don't really talk about. If you'd like to join, click the link here or in the description and I'll see you there. All right, so of course this is the kitchen space and the one thing that like everyone comments about, like all the foodie people especially, is the spice rack. And apparently that's a lot of spices. I don't really cook a lot. We've got a Greystone uh, two burner propane stove here. Um, we found this at random on Amazon and it just fit our space really well. We're super happy with it. We've got a basic cutlery drawer right here. And then underneath we have space for pots, pans, kettle, cutting boards and all of that stuff. So I'll point out this uh, little detail right here. This switch is actually for our propane and our propane is on a uh, remote 12 volt uh, ball valve. So whenever we energize the ball valve, um, it just goes open like this. And then as soon as we um, de-energize it, it just returns to a normally closed state. And that means that there's no propane coming into the van when we don't want it. So really we, we're not super worried about gas uh, leaking, although we do have a CO2 and gas detector on the floor. So that's something that I kind of tell a lot of people about um, because it's just a really great safety feature. So we'll go over here to this space right here. And oddly enough, this is something that I'm pretty proud of. This is what I call the, the off-road dish storage. So a lot of people see this and they say, oh, your dishes are gonna fall out when you go off-roading. And I say, no, 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 no. Because all of our dishes are actually locked into place, but then they come out easily. And I just played with it for a little while and made it so that the dishes uh, kind of lock in place easily, but then they're super easy to get out if you know how to get them out. And of course, we've got like a AeroPress, you know, comes out fairly easy, but if you know how to put it in, it's not gonna come out on its own, which is really great. So that's a little thing that I'm pretty proud of. All right, so this is what I kind of refer to as the water unit. We've got about 70 liters of fresh water in three jerry cans down here. And all of that water goes through a two-stage filtration system, uh, charcoal filter, and a, I think a 0 0.02 micron uh, medical grade filter. So our water comes out super clean. It's just, of course, um, sent out by a 12 volt pump to our little tap here. We've got a fairly decent sized uh, bar sink here. So one of the other things that I tell a lot of people is that um, when you're in a van and living in a van, um, countertop space is prime real estate. So we have a little bit of additional countertop space here and uh, just, that just gets us a little bit more. Okay, so before we get started on all the stuff back here, I'll just make a quick note that all of these countertops are made from maple off of my parents' property and my parents were gracious enough to gift me a lot of uh, hardwoods that uh, was cut and milled on their property. And so this wood here, here, um, all the trim, it's all like a mix of maple and oak. And uh, also the, like the hand poles and stuff like that on our doors are all from the island that we live on, which is Quadra Island uh, up in British Columbia. And yeah, it's this nice little like personal touch of home that we get to bring with us. All right, so this kind of is a bit of a centerpiece in the van. Lots of people want to ask about this particular stove. And this stove was made by a company called tinystove.com in Switzerland. And it's actually a friend of mine who I met uh, in Alaska. He's from Switzerland. He was doing the Pan American Highway. And when he was done, he went back to Switzerland and started making these. And this is the very first production model of this stove, which is called the Peanut. We affectionately call this stove Tiny Tim the Tiny Stove. <laughs> it's just enough to keep us warm during the long days when it's really cold outside. You know, you just throw a little log in there every half hour or so, and it keeps it toasty warm in here. It's a really great addition to have in the van uh, so that we're not running the propane heater all the time. You can see on the back, I put kind of just some heat shielding so that the wood doesn't get too hot, but really it's it's already far enough away that I'm not gonna be burning anything. And then on the roof, um, there's this really cool hatch that opens up and then I put the rest of the flue pipe in. And um, we have all of the uh, wood storage just underneath in this little cabinet here. And uh, yeah, we can carry up to like, I think about three days worth of wood. I carry just a 20 volt chainsaw on the back. so if Whenever I need more wood, I can go cut it and lop it up into small pieces and then carry it with me and burn it 
whenever I need it. So yeah. One of the like the themes of this build was storage. Uh, I wanted to be able to store a lot of things and have a place for everything and everything in its place. And that is kind of why it looks as clean as it does in here. Yeah, I build storage everywhere. Right below me here is uh, the second of our mini pantry spaces. There's kind of like a, you know, like a hatch and lots of food in there. We got another hatch right here, more food in there. And then right here is our laundry hamper. It's pretty small, but we have a laundry hamper. So that's pretty great. Over on this side, I've got a, uh, like a charging cabinet right here where I just like charge all of my electronics. Like I said before, this is wood storage. On either side of me up here, uh, these overhead cabinets, um, we've got my clothing right here. We've got Meg's clothing here. Meg as well has additional, just easy to access clothing down here along the bed. And then behind me back here is more uh, clothing storage and some toiletries and stuff like that. So we're able to store a lot of things in here and you'd never know it, which is, uh, you know, kind of fun. All right, so you may by this point have been wondering where the heck do we sleep? And we have a really cool little bed that I like to show people. So all we do is this. And now we got a six and a half foot by four foot bed that I can sleep in comfortably. And um, I'm six foot two and my feet don't even make it to the end. And um, yeah, it's just like a really easy way to store a bed but also have a couch and it maximizes the space and is super comfortable. So yay, folding bed. All right, so we have a relatively small electrical system and it certainly has a very small footprint, which is uh, really what I wanted. So battery wise, we only have 200 amp hours of lithium. And the really cool thing about it is the company that we use for our electrical system, Rare Earth Elements Solar or ReSolar, they took a typical 100 amp hour case and packed 200 amp hours worth of lithium into it. So we actually have 200 amp hours down here and it's like a really small footprint. And then for our inverter, we have a 1500 watt inverter, but it's also an inverter charger. So we can plug into shore power and charge our battery just from shore power. And then for charging, we have a 40 amp DC DC MPPT. So they're combined as well so while we're driving it switches over to alternator charging and then when we're sitting it switches over to solar charging we have 330 watts on the roof and you'll see that two of those panels i can actually tilt to 45 degrees which really increases the efficiency of the panel we can sit here all day you know starlink going and uh, refrigerator going charging computers all of that stuff and really not get below like 80 percent on our battery and it'll charge right up and our little router here just for our Starlink setup. And then the dish is flat mounted on the roof. We got like a master shut off right here. So in the event of an emergency, uh, I can just switch off the entire electrical system. That's our electrical system. It's pretty small and I just put it right here behind the driver's seat so that I could access it really quickly. Yep, yep, yep. right back here is our propane and recovery gear box lots of people ask about this all it is is just your basic kind of like truck bed aluminum storage box that it turned on its side you can see in here we've got a 20 pound propane cylinder which lasts us like two months so we've got a bin full of extra fluids we've got air compressor uh, compressor hose got our flue pipe Got a recovery strap back there. So kind of everything just to take care of business. All right, so what you see here is pretty much your run of the mill, totally jam packed full uh, storage area that you find in a lot of other vans. It's no different than the rest, but we kind of organize our space using these Boxio boxes, which are really handy for storing tools. I've got enough tools to really take care of any kind of maintenance in the van. And then we've got like camping gear and a paddle board and all that extra fun stuff. You can see on the doors here and behind me, I've got little storage nooks inside the doors which I can store stuff. Hello, if you're wondering why you're down low, it's because I'm climbing high. You'll notice that this 
bumper of mine has been configured with a convenient ladder so that I can access my roof panels and all of the stuff that I have to do up there. Ta-da! All right, guys, that is the entire van tour for now. I hope you guys enjoyed everything that you saw and maybe even got some ideas. If you guys want to follow along with our travels, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at Slow Roamers. We shoot some really beautiful travel videos uh, following our exploits, trying to get to far and distant places with a two-wheel drive vehicle. And um, Meg does a lot of cooking content, and uh, I also shoot photos that I post on Instagram and all that stuff. And of course, starting this summer, we're going to be going from Tuktoyaktuk, Northwest Territories, Canada, all the way down to Ushuaia, Argentina. So that will be over the next year and a half or two. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate you guys being here. And uh, until the next one, keep on roaming. Peace.